everybody, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Thanks for joining us here on YouTube. Be sure to check out RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com for everything Royal Caribbean related. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays to everybody out there. Thank you for taking some time in this busy holiday season to come talk some Royal Caribbean cruises with me. I do appreciate it. Every Monday, we are live right here on YouTube, uh, hanging out with you guys. So thank you for joining us here. Uh, it is a, uh, it was a little chilly last week, but this week, it, today it's warmed up a little bit. We're back in the seventies, which for Floridians is, uh, on the borderline of acceptable temperatures. Not me. I like it cold, but, uh, glad you're here. Hope it's all, hope things are well with each and every one of you. And I appreciate you again, you joining us here. We've got a lot of people in chat already. Bill Egger is here. Melissa Frick, Pam, uh, Morton is joining us. Kenny Keller in the house. Ron Morton is here. Grace joining us as well. Dennis Ormond. Hello, Dennis. Checking in from uh, Northern Nevada. Uh, Bren Hopkins. What's going on? Angel uh, Marshall. Hello, Preston. Hello, Robert Ranelli. Hello, Michelle Prose. Back and welcome. Good to have you here. Don Goldstein. We're back in a t-shirt. That should tell you something right there. I'm wearing a t-shirt, guys. David Franson. Hello, welcome. I am wearing jeans, so, you know, keeping it real. So, Steve B, cold, come back to Connecticut. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. I miss Connecticut, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Jennifer Kellen from MEI Travel is here. Hello, Axel QC, Matt Rurick. Hello. Uh, Karina, buenas uh, noches. There's, are there any activities on the event for cruises during the 4th of July? If your cruise happens to go over July 4th, yes, there are special events on your cruise. There will be barbecue events, there'll be decorations, special trivia, special cocktails. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun little uh, way to spice it up a little bit. We got Nicholas from Singapore in the house. Up, Nicholas, John Amato. Hello, Chance Carol. Welcome. Becky Mankin from MEI Travel is here. Hello, Becky. Thank you for joining us here. Happy New Year. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Meredith Walters, what's going on? Meredith joining us from Florida. Well, hello, neighbor. We've got Cindy Rendon is here. Ciao, Diva. Your 50th birthday is tomorrow. Guys, can we type in chat happy birthday to Chow Diva? 50th. That's awesome. I just had my birthday last week. And uh, yeah, uh, 50 is a big number. So thank you uh, for joining us here. And I hope you have an awesome, awesome birthday celebration. And I think we have our first super chat. And it's a big one. Jan Fagan. Woo! Jan, thank you for the super chat. Jan writes, it's party time with Matt. Party, party, party. Love that. Jan, thank you for your generosity. Happy New Year to you, Jan. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you, Tony Diaz, my friend. Welcome. Good to see you here as well. Jeff Dillinger, will the menus of the main dining room be the same? Nothing is on the Royal Caribbean Ambient yet for the ships I have looked at. It's a good question. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. So if you rewind a couple months ago, um, Royal Caribbean president and CEO, Michael Bailey, sent an email out and mentioned one of the things that Royal Caribbean is working on during this whole shutdown is an updated main dining room menu, which was news to everybody because this is the first we've heard of the, an update to the menu. Well, we haven't heard anything since. So in retrospect, uh, I don't know what to expect. Maybe it'll be updated. Maybe it won't. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. It's one of those many things that we're just like, well, we got to wait and see what happens with when cruises actually do restart holy moly pascal with an epic omg super chat Woo! thank you pascal holy moly happy new year happy belated birthday hope to see you in july thank you thank you and i agree yes really hope we're seeing each other in july preferably on a cruise ship i mean let's be honest pascal we could probably see each other like at a tgi fridays here in florida and not that I don't want to see you at TGI Fridays in Florida, but you know what I mean. We got on a cruise ship, right? Pascal, thank you so much for your generosity. That was very much too kind for, you, for, for, for me, but I do appreciate it very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Mark the Shark, what is going on? Tyler Diedrich, shouldn't you be in San Juan? Last year, I was, but no, today. I mean, where should I? I don't know that I had a cruise over New Year's, but hey, man, twist my arm, right? Would love to, to go back. Would love to go back. Meredith is here. Welcome. Brent Lancer and FA first uh, time here. Me and my wife want to go on a cruise with no kids on board. We live near Galveston. What's your advice? You're not going on a Royal Caribbean. There are no cruises on Royal Caribbean that offer no kids. Um, 
you'd have to look at another cruise line. And I'm not very familiar with other cruise lines or which ones to recommend in that regard. If you want to go on a World Caribbean cruise that has less children on board, um, certainly go during the time of year in which uh, school is in session. So if you go like, you know, uh, late January, most of February, you know, if you just miss, look at your school calendar, avoid those weeks, you're good to go. Beatrice with the super chat. Thank you, Beatrice. Beatrice writes, I'm going to Florida March 21. I hope you're going on a cruise also. Florida's not bad, but uh, a cruise, not a terrible choice as well. So, um, and, uh, and chat reminding me that there is a Virgin Voyages is a cruise line that offers kids free cruising. Of course, Virgin Voyages hasn't really sailed much. They've had a couple of sailings in Europe prior to the whole cruise industry shutting down. So it, 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 it's a new cruise line, obviously. I'm not sure how, if, if really the jury is out on it, but it is an option there. But uh, no, if we're talking Royal Caribbean, we're talking about family cruise. That's always been a family cruise line. And if you guys saw my video last week, um, I did a, a posted a video last week on our YouTube channel here about the top, I forgot it was eight or so things that I hear people who cruise all the time saying, and one of them, and no offense to you, Red Lantern, I'm not pointing, I'm not, just, you're reminding me of this. People who cruise on Royal Caribbean a lot and always want to go on a cruise without kids. And I'm like, you know, Royal Caribbean's a family cruise line. It's not like it was kid free and then they added it recently. I don't know. It always seemed odd to me. So Mark Satori from Canada. Welcome. Thanks for joining us here. Uh, Lauren Fetch in the house of Lauren. What is your favorite cruise drink for New Year's Eve? Let me have him a drink of water here. Let me think on that. Favorite? Well, that's a good question, Lauren. I mean, my favorite cruise drink has always been uh, a lava flow with crack and rum. Love that. Uh, that's a great way to celebrate the new year. You might also say, and I far be it for me to step on tradition, but you might have a a shot to ring in the new year, a shot of Patron tequila. Not a bad choice as well. Um, but I'm if you're talking like cocktail. I always go, I always defer Lava Flow, Crack, and Rum, the way to go right there. Valerie D, it says, I'm so ready to cruise. When it opens back up, we plan to do a two-week cruise on one of the back-to-backs. I'm having cruise withdrawal. That sounds amazing, Valerie, and I agree. When cruising resumes at some point in 21, I'm going to be so ready to get on there. I'm going to make it for lost time. There's back-to-backs every other week. I don't know. I'm going to figure it out and make a way to make up for lost time. So, uh that, that's very, very true. Uh, Becky Menken, Bailey's Butterball for those of us with a sweet tooth. Yeah, uh, that, that is very much for those with a sweet tooth. But <laughs> no, no, not a real, no, no, not a real person. Thank you for the super chat. Not a real person. It always reminds, your name reminds me of, uh, of the Odyssey, the uh, Homer's uh, epic tale in which the, um, the Cyclops, is uh, uh, Odysseus pretends to says his name is nobody, nobody, and so and then he pokes his eye out or hurts him anyway. And the Cyclops is running around like ah, and they're like who did this to you, Cyclops? He says nobody did this to me, nobody did this to me. Anyway, not a real person. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that. Uh, Aristotle says rose champagne. Yeah, champagne is probably the de facto drink for New Year's Eve, but I I don't like champagne. I can, I'll drink it, but I'm, I will not order it. You know what I mean? So that's just me. But uh, Mike Pastore, about to make cucumber martinis. Mike, I'll beat your house in 45 minutes. Keep it ready for me. Cruise Addicts with the super chat. Thank you, Cruise Addicts. Says, Hi, Matt. Do you think Royal Caribbean is aiming for March? I know no one knows. I think Royal Caribbean is aiming for March as far as they can. Um, when it comes to cruises resuming, guys, don't forget, there is a critical first and second there's a couple steps that have to happen before cruises can resume and that is the test sailings they have to and, and along with other things basically royal caribbean has to prove to the cdc and get permission to be able to restart cruises um safely in order to be able to actually resume sailings um obviously we have not heard anything on that front doesn't mean nothing has been done we just simply don't know because neither royal caribbean nor the cdc are really saying anything who knows? Um, I have heard certainly that January is likely when we might start seeing test cruises really get going. Um, but, you know, who knows? We, like you said, Cruise Axe, no one really knows. So I think March is still the target. 
Um, and, and in my opinion, Royal Caribbean targets, when, when they have a date for resuming cruises, they keep that date until it becomes absolutely apparent that there is a 0% chance of that occurring, and then they will cancel them. Um, but I do believe, yes, that is the goal. Will it be all 26 ships or 20, however many ships are in the fleet now with Majesty and Empress gone? I don't even know how many ships are in the fleet anymore. But I can guarantee you it will not be all ships at once, right? Even if they hit that March date, we're probably looking at one or two ships to, to start with. So almost certainly, I don't know, almost, certainly there will be more cancellations. May not be the entire fleet, but yeah, um, we'll have to wait and see. So... Uh, Jennifer cancels beer. The answer is always beer. You can't go wrong with beer. I, I don't think you're wrong, Jennifer. Uh, Furman Reynolds. I have a cruise out of San Juan, March 21st, 21. It's available for check-in. Is there anything, any harm in doing check-in just in case? No, 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 not, no harm at all. In fact, I would say you're doing yourself a favor by doing online check-in early because, hey, listen, there's only a limited amount of check-in times. Um, they go quickly. So yeah, you got nothing to lose, everything to gain other than your time, of course, but it doesn't take that long to do the online check, and especially if you have a passport and you're doing the scanning, it's really, really easy. So, Sherry from Awesome Sunsets, hello, welcome. Uh, Pam Morton, we need the stuff on the shelves. Yeah, it's coming. I got to get the anchors up so that it doesn't fall over, like on me or one of my children. So that's the next step, but yes, not to worry. Stacy Lamp, how long do the test cruises have to sail to pass CDC requirements? Good question, Stacy. We don't know. There has not been any uh, a any edict or rule or guidelines given by the CDC. Basically, it's kind of like, don't call us, we'll call you. What I mean by that is the CDC will let you them know when they've passed. There isn't a set time right there. So Nicholas wants to know what is included in the refreshment package. That's the non-alcoholic package. Basically, any drink that costs extra that doesn't have alcohol, uh, Virgin daiquiris, pina coladas, sodas, cough, premium coffees, you know, lattes, bottled water, sports drinks, juice. Uh, those are all included. Basically, anything that costs extra for any drink that costs extra that does not um, uh, have alcohol in it. There are a few exceptions, obviously, like, you know, certain like the milkshakes at Ben and Jerry's not included, but um, Starbucks not included. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Evan, I heard some other cruise lines are thinking about making the COVID vaccine mandatory as Royal Caribbean following. I number, well, the answer is no. Um, we, no, we haven't heard anything from Royal Caribbean on that front. Number two, I have not heard of one actual other cruise line announcing that there's just been a lot of speculation that they may. Um, but there's been, I have not, I am not aware of any cruise line. Again, I could be wrong on this, but I can tell you for sure Royal Caribbean has not said a thing about it, but I can tell you all as in addition to that, um, that I'm not aware of any other cruise line that has actually announced that will be the case. The only thing I've ever heard is Qantas Airlines in Australia, like kind of hinted at it, but then they walked it back. So who knows? Certainly a possibility, but you never know. Uh, Sherry, of this shelf up, it looks good. Yeah, no, it's, it's looking nice. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, Brogan, hello and welcome. Nathan, I read the article you posted regarding Wall Street speculation about when the fleet will resume. I can't help but speculate it'll be quite a while before vision class ships turn a profit. I don't think you're wrong, Nathan. I mean, that's a, that's a very astute observation. Um, when each ship resumes sailings, gets back, uh, it's very much going to be a game that I think even a year from now, my prediction is a year from now, we'll have cruise ships sailing again. Will we have the whole fleet sailing again a year from now? I'm not sure about that. I think that is still very much up in the air, and I kind of doubt it, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but it's going to be a bit of a game. I mean, you guys, the, the, the number one question on these live chats is going to go from when will cruises restart to when will cruises restart on blank of the seas, whatever ship it happens to be in. The answer will still be the same, which is uh, no one knows. So, uh, Brogan, have I missed any Royal Caribbean news recently? Good news, man. There's this place called RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. It's got all the news there. Uh, but today, not, not much news news. I mean, Royal Caribbean is pretty quiet um, since uh, about the week before uh, uh, Christmas, but the biggest news probably broken is the fact that Royal Caribbean has announced they're selling and have sold Majesty and Empress of the Seas. Um, over the weekend, we heard, we think, and it's probably true, that a Indian cruise line has purchased the uh, Empress of the Seas. We don't know who bought Majesty yet, but the good news is neither ship appears to be scrapped. They're going to continue sailing on somewhere else, so yeah. 
Uh, Jason Peterson, what's going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Beatrice says, I'm going to Orlando during spring break 21. I might do something fun there, but I don't know about Royal Caribbean, but at least I'm going to be in Orlando on spring break in March of 21. Awesome. Hope you have a great time. Stay safe, though. Remember, be safe. That's the important thing right there. Avoid the crowds. You know, do your own thing. So, uh, Big Toucan is $1,400, a good price for a sailing on Symphony in June 22. Uh, how long is the cruise? How many people are on the cruise? What type of stateroom? That is the, that's a better, you, it's like, you're kind of like asking like, is $20,000 a good price or, you know, I don't know, $30,000 a good price for a car? Uh, what kind of car? A Mercedes? Yeah. Uh, a Fiat? No. <laughs> but, uh, any more details from that? So, uh, Cat Ruin or Cat Ruin, Cat Ruin, Cat writes, is it wrong that I'm kind of excited that Air to Sea have finally started showing flight options for me and my Odyssey Transatlantic in October 21. Cat, I don't think that's wrong at all. I think it's great. Uh, Roger Arts, I have a two-bedroom aqua theater suite scheduled for October 2022 for adult selling. What's a good gratuity for the Royal Genie? Good question, Roger. There isn't a firm price. I There's actually a great thread about this, Roger, on the Royal Caribbean blog message boards, and it really runs the gamut. I mean, there's people who tip you know, uh, per person per day, a flat tip. There is no standard right or wrong answer there. Um, yeah, I, I wish I could give you a better answer, but some people tip just a flat, like here's an extra blank amount of money. Some people will tip, okay, it was seven nights. We had four people, some mathematics involved there, you know, people times nights equals that. Don't know. So, Jay Wanderman, what's going on? Uh, Kirk, with ships empty, any news on upgrading beds, TV, and redecorating? Nope, nope, and nope. In fact, I don't expect that to be the case at all. Um, Royal Caribbean is trying to really manage their money as well as they can, and I just don't think that's really in the budget for what they're doing. But there's been, to, to answer your question as directly as I can, no, there's been no mention of any of those things being updated. Uh, just again, ships out the Key West if they're reduced capacity under the threshold for that law that was voted in. No, um, my, the bait, the, the law, the new, um, um, ordinance that was passed is about ship capacity, not actually how many people are on board the ship. So it appears the answer is no. Audrey wants to know, do you think they will extend the lift and shift option to a later date if they do not start selling in March? I would think so, Audrey. Of course, I don't know, but they've already demonstrated the case to be that as long as the shutdown continues, yes, they'll continue to do that. So, my expectation would be, uh, yeah, <laughs> Papa Mosa, when will Fiat of the Seas sail again, right? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Jason wants to know, can you leave your kids on the ship in the kids club while we're off the ship visiting in a port? Yes, absolutely. I've done that before many times. Yes, absolutely true. Um, let's see here. Fatima, do you think that tips will go up when we go back to sailing again? You know, over the time, the answer is, I don't know that tips will go up immediately when, when cruises restart Fatima. However, cruise, uh, sorry, gratuity goes up periodically. Every couple of years, Royal Caribbean raises the rates. They haven't done it in quite a while. I think it's been at least two years. If I could, I could be wrong on that, Fatima. Um, so here's what I'm going to tell you. I don't think there's a direct correlation between cruises going up or cruises restarting and tips immediately going up. Um, but I do believe at some point that is going to happen because it's been a while since they've done it. Like I said, about every couple of years, I think really to keep pace with inflation and whatnot, they do that. So really not inflation, cost of living kind of stuff. So uh, Bergen, do you think because Royal Caribbean has placed a lure this is in Europe for summer 22, they could be planning to do amplification either before or after her uh, summer season there? Good question. Or winter season, or dinner season. I know that's the type of Bergen. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, I, one, the easy way to figure it out, Brogan, is look at her schedule and is to see if there's a gap or not in that schedule, right? Is there is there a missing time frame between her North American season and and beyond? Tony Diaz with an epic super chat. Woo! Thank you, Tony. Happy New Year. May 2021 be better than 2020. We all start cruising again, and I go back to my jealousy of you. I, for one, sir, am very much looking forward to to going back on cruises. Let 21 be the year in which Tony Diaz's wife is like, is that guy on a cruise again? I miss those days, Tony. Yes. What a legend, Tony Diaz. Thank you, my friend. You guys are very, 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 very kind today. Very generous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Mark, do most people tip daily or at the end of the cruise 
in the Diamond Lounge? Is there a wrong way? That's a good question, Mark. There is no wrong way. Um, I generally see it at the end of the cruise, but I've seen it both ways, man. I've seen people do it every, when, as they come in, you know, hey, it's server, you know, whatever here, you know, they slip them money with like, you know, and that covers them for the day. Some people do it. All. I do it at the end. I'm more of a at the end of the cruise because who knows? Sometimes on night one, I might see someone. I don't know. I do it at the end of the cruise. Um, it's not compulsory by any means. It really depends on did I really, you know, feel like we made a connection with a crew member there with someone who took a little extra care of us, somebody who brought my daughter like 17 cherries in her uh, Shirley Temple. Like that kind of service deserves a little something, something extra, right? Um, but I don't think there's anything wrong. You do how you do, how you feel is appropriate. That's the important thing. I will tell you this much. The crew members certainly appreciate anything and, any, and everything that you can provide them. So don't look at it as like they're going to look at you and be like, oh, oh, that guy. I don't think so at all. So it's a good question, Mark. Uh, GG's animation. Any word about Royal Caribbean extending the future cruise credits that are slated to expire at the end of 21? Nothing official, GG. But let's be honest. And this is what I've seen thus far through this shutdown. The longer the shutdown goes, the more likely they will extend it. They're not going to be... Um, Royal Caribbean has proven by the virtue of the fact that they've extended... Um, FCCs that were going to expire in 2020 and even earlier in 21, they've already expired them to the, or sorry, they've already extended them to the end of 2021. Royal Caribbean has proven with the FCCs, they want to do the right thing. They're not looking just to be like, ha 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 suckers. You guys aren't going to be able to use it. No, they want to be do right by you guys. They want you to come back on the cruise line. It does them no good to make a hundred dollars here. And then, you know, you'll never cruise with them again. Anyway, um, they, I, I think the longer it goes, absolutely. So, Hey, Ben Cohen is here. Haven't been on YouTube live in a hot second. Welcome back, Ben. Good to see you. Um, Let's see here. We had a question. Ooh, Adventure Motion. What do you think will happen in about 30 years to Oasis of the Seas? Hard to imagine a ship that big ever being scrapped. Listen, people probably said the same thing about Sovereign of the Seas 30 years ago. It's all relative. It will certainly today, yes, I agree. A cruise ship, um, Oasis is uh, 12 years old, right? 2008. And um, uh, she's, still got, I mean, that's, she's not even you know halfway through their lifespan. I mean, there are a couple things that, that stand out to me. And again, I am not a maritime expert by any means. But number one, the idea that cruise ships get retired after about 25, 30 years, you know, was more of an older type cruise ship. I think these days cruise ships cruise lines are maintaining their cruise ships better they're being the cruise ships themselves are being built to last longer um so eventually yes every ship will be retired it's just an inevitability it's going to happen but the question is of course when and I understand exactly what you're saying at some point Royal Caribbean will sell the Oasis class ships I mean it's just it's gonna happen at some point but um I believe by that point it, they will be about as in as long or as long in the tooth or as long in the tooth as you know, certainly the vision class is today, or maybe some other ships are coming up. It's still crazy to me to think about them. Royal Caribbean even retiring the Voyager class ships or the freedom class ships, or even the radiance class ships. Like, you know, I always viewed the sovereign class as like, oh, those are kind of older ships. So that's a previous generation, but you know, we're talking about cruise ships now that were built in the very late nineties, if not early two thousands. <coughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, Nicholas says that on Quantum of the Seas, Royal Caribbean changed the Diamond Lounge to Casino VIP room. Uh, can Diamond members now use the Suite Lounge on Quantum? I don't know, Nick. Um, that's a good question. In Singapore and uh, in Asian cruises in general, there's a lot of policies that kind of differ a lot from North America and uh, Europe. So it's hard for me to answer that question, quite frankly. But um, interesting uh, news nonetheless. So I'd, you'd have to ask on board. I'm... I'm or at least wait for cruises to change over here and then get a better sense of it. So, uh, Terry Glenn is, is an open deposit made on the ship treated the same way as an FCC with regards to extension. Yes. It's still a future cruise credit. It's just, you got it by a different way, but yes, yes, absolutely. Um, let's see. Powerful female. Isn't the icon due to sail in 2022? No, I think, Actually, was it 23? I don't know. The, here's the answer to your question, Papa Female. It's a good question. Um, we've heard really nothing about it. The, by virtue of the fact that Odyssey got delayed a year, Wonder of the Seas got delayed a year, I think Icon is probably delayed in some form or fashion. 
Um, there's evidence that she's being built, but really Royal Caribbean has said absolutely nothing about the icon class. I mean, it's, it's been just, you know, nothing to say about that. Don Goldstein, as long as they are kept commercially viable, cruise ships are going to be around for a long time. That I agree with. That's absolutely true. And one of the big differences between a majesty of the seas, a grandeur of the seas, um, and, and an Oasis class ship is the newer ships are really the, the, the bigger newer ships, um, are more efficient, if you will, they're more cost effective to run. So I think Don Goldstein has a very good point here as always that the, the viability of a cruise ship, the reason to keep a cruise ship in the fleet versus sell it has nothing to do with like age. It's not like they, they take out the cruise ship from the fridge, look at the expiration date, like, Oh God, you know, this thing expired three years ago. No, they say, is this ship making money? Can this ship still make money? Does it still fit into our financial plan? And the answer is yes, she'll absolutely stay there. So, uh, Denise, so I need to register my minor grandchildren for crown and anchor for them to get double points. Um, Yes. Um, in order to get the double points, you have to have a your Crown Anchor reservation number on the reservation. So, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let's see here. Matthew Smith, is it possible to download the activity waivers before you cruise? They used to offer that online on some ships, but you do it now on board the ship. In fact, in some ships, you can actually do that via your stateroom television. Uh, but no, you cannot. I know you, it's a great idea. Like, let's save some time here. I think, um, and again, I have not been on Quantum of the seasons they restarted, but I believe in Singapore on Quantum, a lot of that has been moved to the app because a lot of the uh, functionality, a lot of the, they're, they're, Royal Caribbean has been trying basically to reduce the um, uh, physical contact between guests and certainly digitizing forms is a great idea for way for that to work. So, Sea Monkey, how are they going to handle shore excursions? Can you still book with a private company? Officially, we don't know yet. Royal Caribbean has not announced this full set of protocols for how that will work. Unofficially, Sea Monkey, my expectation, I think most people's expectation is, um, in, at least in the short term, that it, short excursions will only be able to run through comp through basically Royal Caribbean tours, not on your own. And that is to avoid people going and potentially ex getting exposed to COVID-19 um, uh, on, a, on, a, on a different tour. And it, they, I base this on Sea Monkey, the fact that this is what cruise lines in Europe have been doing to uh, all summer long. It's worked. It's been effective. Thus, I believe that to be the case. Well, that will not always be the case. It will not be the law of the land forever. But I think in the short term, the answer is almost certainly so. Um, Izzy wants to know, will we ever see an Oasis clash yet coming to Singapore? You never know. I mean, don't forget, Izzy, you've got Wonder of the Seas coming to uh, China in 2022. And uh, listen, Quantum of the Seas used to cruise out of China exclusively. And... You know, eventually now she's over in Singapore. So you never know. Uh, we've got Gotta Have Faith here. New subby from New Haven, Connecticut. Gotta Have Faith. Welcome. I grew up uh, about eh, 12 exits east of you or north of you on I-95. Good to see you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you're having some awesome New Haven pizza because if I was in New Haven right now, that's what I would be eating. Uh, Jimmy, do you think Enchantment of the Seas will be scrapped anytime soon? I have no idea. I mean, really and truly, um, it's the, uh, if we've learned anything, um, from this whole shutdown, number one, the rumor mill is usually very wrong. And number two, the, uh, when cruise ships get sold, whether they're scrapped or to another company to be sale again, it's kind of a surprise. It kind of comes out of nowhere. Um, that was certainly the case with the majesty and empress of the seas. So we'll have to wait and see. Don't know. But obviously, Jimmy, um, anything's possible. And, I, and the longer things go on in terms of the shutdown, that is, um, I feel like I've, there's more. World Cup will pull whatever levers they have to in order to keep going. But it's anyone's guess what any of those levers may actually be. So, uh, Ladybug, has World Cup been started test run cruises? If not, when? We don't know, Ladybug. Um, if they have, we certainly aren't aware of them. Um Part of that is, I think, twofold. Number one, the CDC. Um, in order to operate a test cruise, the CDC has to give a cruise line permission to start one. And number two, let's not forget that the holidays here. Between Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's, if you guys, I'm sure if you guys work in the private sector as well, or the government work, that is, when you get to this time of the year, once you get to Thanksgiving, nothing gets done anymore. Everyone's taking off time vacation. It kind of slows down. Um, 
So the answer is we don't know. Um, there's been no evidence they have or haven't. We just, it has, there's been just a void of updates in that regard. Um, but certainly, uh, I, I think that if they haven't done them yet, and that's probably the case, probably a safe bet that they haven't done test sailings outside of Singapore. Singapore they have, but I'm talking here in the U.S., obviously. Um, I, I think they're going to be hot and heavy to get those going in January. Um, but, you know, as you guys know, I try not to delve too much into rumors and speculation because, you know, they're rarely right, quite frankly. But um, it's it's up to this point, we have not really been provided much information on how that's working, any kind of timeline or really any updates at all. So uh, where in Connecticut are you from? I grew up in Madison. I live in Florida now, so I don't live in Connecticut anymore. But um, whenever I see someone from Connecticut, brings a it brings a smile to my face. So uh, Nathan, will Royal Caribbean bring another cruise ship to New Orleans? Good question. I don't know. I don't know. JC, what's up, dude? Do you have to book with FCC by April 22 or sail by April 2022? I believe it is sail by April 22, book by the end of 21, if I'm not mistaken. That could change, JC. Um, Royal Caribbean has proven that as this shutdown drags on, that they're willing to obviously push those timelines out there. Not to mention, of course, that there's very few cruises beyond April 2022 to book right now anyway. So I think in order, first and foremost, they'd have to release more of their 2022 bookings in order to open up that period. Because if they say, okay, you can book any cruise at the, between, you know, any cruise at the, uh, by the end of 2022, people will be like, all right, I want to book a cruise in October, 2022 on harmony of the seas. And they're going to be like, well, we don't, that cruise doesn't, we haven't released that sailing yet. So you can understand why that causes frustration. So, uh, AZ, may I know which Royal Caribbean ship comes to Singapore? Quantum of the seas is sailing there right now. If you live in Singapore, you can book a cruise on her. Yeah. So, uh, not a real person. You're originally from Stratford. Nice. No Stratford very well because it's uh, with the last stop on Metro North before we get to New Haven. Coming from New York, that is. So, uh, is it easy to book North Star and iFly? If you book it before your cruise, the answer is yes. If you wait to book it on board the ship, the answer is no. So, definitely book it ahead of time. Definitely the way to go. Um, gotta have faith. Modern and pizza. Modern pizza is good, but I'm a, I'm a Pepe's guy. I mean, that's like, there's, there's Pepe's and there's everything else. But modern pizza is not bad. I'll take that any day of the week. Uh, gotta have faith. My, my fiance and I plan on celebrating our honeymoon in June, 2022 on Oasis of the Seas. Is it possible to ask for an, an intimate table for two in the main dining? Yes. Um, you definitely can. You can speak to the head waiter, uh, on board your ship. You can also put in your reservation. Um, there's an email address actually. I believe well, I haven't gotten this question in a long time. I believe it is RCL. Let me get you the email because it's been such a long time. I don't remember. Table for two. You can send an email to. This is, talk about making a mental note about this. Two to three weeks before your cruise, send an email to RCL Dining at RCCL.com. I'll post the email address in chat here. Um, that's the email address, RCL Dining at RCCL.com. Send about two to three weeks with your request. So basically two to three weeks before your cruise in June 2022 or maybe May, depending on when your cruise is. You'll tell them, hey, my name is, this is my last name. Here's my reservation number. I'm on this ship and we'd like to have a, a, a table for two on our cruise. And they can usually hook you up with that. So, um, Is it true Royal Caribbean allowing guests over 70 to transfer FCC to other family members? Yes. Um, guests over 70 or guests under 12, I believe, is the rule. Jordan fam, do you think Empress of the Seas or Majesty going to be scrapped? No, they're going to sail again, Jordan. Um, we already know that Empress of the Seas is going to be sailing again. We already know who the buyer is. It's in a cruise line in India that's announced it. But Royal Caribbean said, Jordan, for what it's worth, that it, they're going to sail on, with another cruise line. So it does not appear to be scrapped. It appears to be uh, going forward. Uh, Becky Megan, Matt loves the iFly. Not true at all. <laughs> Max from Munich. Guten Tag, my friend. Welcome. Good to see you here. Uh, let's see. Pascal says, Celebrity Floor is on your bucket list for sure. And any Azamara ship. Pinky's up, Pascal. I like that. It's uh, interesting. If, if Celebrity Flora. Uh, is that, wait, is the Flora, that's the Galapagos ship, right? 
I'm thinking of um, Apex and uh, Edge. But the Flora is, if I'm not mistaken, is a special new ship that Celebrity built in 2018, I believe she launched. And she's like a really small ship designed for like the Galapagos Islands. And yeah, I mean, I, at some point in my life, I would love to go there. It seems like it's just like, it's just so different and unique that, yeah, I, I, like I'm not the world's biggest like nature. Like I want to go see all the animals and be among them, but it certainly seems like a really cool thing right there. Uh, Gigi wants to know, do you think it would be smart for Royal Caribbean to offer a vaccine requ Sorry. Do you think it would be smart for Royal Caribbean to offer a vaccine required crews offering August 7th must show proof of vaccine? I don't know. Um, I think it's a little too early in the lifespan here of this vaccine to know how quickly people can get it, how it's going to work um, in, in terms of, you know, whether that makes business sense or not. It remains, it, it's a good question. Certainly the role of the vaccine on cruise ships going forward is very much um, at the top of a lot of people's conversations right now because, you know, it, it, obviously the vaccine plays a significant role right now. Um, and if you're the cruise lines, you were looking at this as what is the number one reason why cruise lines are having trouble being able to restart and get permission to restart from the CDC? And that is because the CDC believes that the cruise line cruise ships um, are essentially incubators for COVID, and, and that they the, by going by virtue of being on a cruise ship, you're instantly going to it, it makes it more it facilitates the spread of the virus. Okay, I don't agree with any of that, but I'm just telling you that that's what they believe. And um, certainly, you can make the argument. Well, well, if everyone gets you know, if requiring the vaccine of guests were to occur. Hey, that would, you know, certainly not quite guarantee, but certainly mitigate the risk to a, a very low point to the, to the fact that, you know, the CDC would be able to say, okay, well, you can operate your cruise lines. But um, we, we just don't know. Um, it's too early to know. And, and I don't, I'll be the first to admit, I don't know enough about the business side of that kind of a decision or the medical side of that kind of decision to know what to expect. So I think it's a little too early to see. Um, we, it's certainly going to be a question we're probably going to be fielding for a while, but it's still very much no cruise line has given a definitive yes or no. I believe Norwegian Cruise Line CEO kind of hinted about it, talked about it a little bit, but beyond that, um, yeah, I, it's 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 I I, I firmly classify it as um, um, up in the air essentially. So. Not the answer you're looking for. Not the answer anyone's looking for. Like, people want to say, yes or no, will that happen? Don't know, my friends. Don't know. So, um, yeah, and and I see questions here from Jordan and from Anil. When will cruises open for cruising? Don't know. It's just too early to know. Um, I, I And the answer is still that there's not enough information and too many variables out there to have a real good sense of when cruises might restart. I mean... Here, let, and this is obviously not a very, un, very, very, very unscientific poll about to occur. But guys, type in chat. When do you think cruises will restart? When do you, let, let me put it this way. When do you think the first revenue cruise for Royal Caribbean from North America or Europe? I'll, I'll give you either or. So not test cruises. Paying cruises will start. And by the way, no one knows the answer. I don't care if everybody writes the same answer. It doesn't mean a thing. But I don't even know. I, I you know, there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of arguments we made both ways. On the one hand, you have you know what by the time you get to about late spring, early summer, by that point, everybody who's who wants to get a vaccine will probably be able to get a vaccine. You know what I mean? Like by that point, it will be so widespreadly available that you'll have the opportunity to do so. Is that the linchpin we need to get cruises to restart? Can cruises restart before that point? After that point? There's a lot of factors involved right there. So Michael S. Michael is a very smart guy, by the way. Michael is like, uh, he's always one step ahead of me. First revenue cruises for Royal is June 21. A lot of votes for May. Uh, Ron Morton says October. Jennifer, Ke Jennifer Kellen says May. Uh, by the way, I'm only agreeing with anyone who says the earliest possible. <laughs> if you wrote March, I'm totally on board with you because I want you to be right. I want somebody to come in and be like, I said March and I was right. Dennis Orman says, I wish tomorrow, right? Bill Egger, the evil eight ball knows. Let us never speak of the evil magic eight ball. Man, that thing was just nasty. Destroyed so many tears, right? 
<laughs> Kathy else in March. See, let, let's just let's Kathy. Look, listen, you know, when you when you go to the roulette table and somebody bets on zero or double zero and you're like, who does that? Sometimes they're right. Right. You never know. I, I, I really don't know. I, I get this question. So it's the number one question. Obviously, we get this every question, every every live session we have here. I get that question. Wendell Cruz is restart every every almost every other message board post on Roller Green blog message boards is about that. And I'll tell you, it's it's a it's a very appropriate question, but uh, it's just we don't know, you know, uh, Tomas, how soon can you buy the drink package? You got a cruise on October 22 and still can't buy it. Um, you got plenty of time for that. I wouldn't read too much into the fact that you can't buy it yet, um, but it definitely is. Um, it will eventually show up. You'll have plenty of time to book it. I mean, October 22 is a really long time away, so I'm not surprised, but a year or so. Becky Menken, I miss roulette. Becky, I'll be honest with you. I had no idea that you played roulette. I would love to play roulette. You know why I love roulette? Because it requires absolutely no skill. <laughs> it's all luck. It's all just gravity at work and random <laughs> there, there's there's no straight it's not like blackjack like where it's like oh that guy did this the dealer's showing that or there's no strategy it's just maybe it will maybe it won't and it's kind of fun if you win it's a lot of fun pascal like we should do a roulette that'd be awesome i want to take over the roulette table one time just like a group of royal Caribbean block maybe we'll do it on a group cruise becky all of us in there and somebody's gonna win right so Kenny cases I need to learn craps Kenny I swear it's like they're th craps um um gosh uh, uh this, this is a topping a condiment you put it's not a condiment but a side thing you put on like food uh, you have it at, like barbecues and cookouts uh anyway never mind I'm going I'm wasting too much time Craps is a game I've tried to learn like three or four times. And every time I try to learn it, I'm like, I just, I'm just like, what? Never understood it. I'm sure it's great, but, uh, Danny wants to know, is there a limit on the drink package? There is not. Brianna, can you talk a little bit about the key? Is it worth it for an Oasis class ship like Symphony? Brianna, um, in general, I don't recommend it. There, I have a video on our channel, Brianna, after this live video, check it out, about why I don't recommend the key, but I just don't think it's worth it. It's, it's, it, it obviously costs extra. Um, but I will tell you this, Brianna, if you're not staying in a suite, if you're below Diamond and Crown and Anchor Society, and you are already going to buy the internet, no matter what, for everybody in your room, you can make a decent argument to get the key, but I still don't think it's worthwhile. I think you can get around it and, and save money, and your money's better spent in other ways. Um, and again, I recommend you check out that video. Yes, it's a shameless plug for that video, but I think it does a much better job of explaining why, but... There you have it. So, um, so craps is not that hard. There's like, all I remember of craps is you got to yell at some point hard away. And like the basic, the basic idea is simple, right? Roll one roll. You set the number and basically the, 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 the person has to try to hit that number and any number except for seven and 11 or that number, right? But then there's like the like there's like eight thousand side bets, and I don't know what it is. Uh, Rick says it's a slot machine with a ball. The uh, um, roulette, Ru yeah. Except a slot machine has a computer that jet says, okay, you know, this many spins until it pays out. Roulette is really gravity at work. I mean, there are odds, obviously, but there is no reason that the same number cannot hit every single time from here until the end of time. It likely is not going to happen, but you know what I mean? Anyway, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. This is welcome to gambling this week on cruise ships. My name is Matt. We're talking about uh, uh, <laughs> gambling 101 right there. And yeah, there's so many levels of craps. I, I, I tried learning it. I'm sure it's a great game. I just can't wrap my mind around it. So yeah, craps is too much work for vacation, right, Becky? I know it's not. It's like it's like anything in life. You put a little bit of time and learn it, you'll figure it out. But um, Pam says it's a lot. It's not that hard. It's a lot of fun. I believe you. I just, yeah. Sylvia says, "Hey Matt, if you pay a deposit with an FCC, are we allowed to change one person's name to another person as long as it's in the original pa FCC passenger stays in the cabin?" That's a good question. So Sylvia's saying you make a reservation for Matt and Becky, and Matt and Becky both have an FCC, 
And then I kick Becky out of my room and I bring Jennifer Kellen into my room. Um, and uh, can I do that? Or can, does the FCC go back to Becky? Becky, as the person you kicked out of the room or anyone from MEI travel, um, I don't know. I don't know the answer, but maybe you guys know the answer. Maybe some of our travel agent friends uh, know the answer to how that works. My guess is that the system isn't that sophisticated to track it, but I could be totally wrong. I've never tried it. I, I have not personally tried it, so I don't know definitively what um, if that's the case. Tell us what happened to your Welcome Monopoly. I still have it. It's just not on my shelf. I read It's a long story about the shelves, but it's still here. I still have it. So, uh, Powerful Female says, I tried it. Does not FCC stays with the original person? Really? Um, Jennifer says, I believe FCC stays with the guest. I'm surprised the Royal Caribbean system is that sophisticated to keep track of it, but... I le- there you go. I'm going to defer to you guys. Thank you, guys. Tony Diaz, I'm a roulette junkie. I need help. I agree. I Listen, man, not, I, not that you need help, but uh, I love roulette. The problem with roulette for me is at, at a certain point, I start, I, I just second-guess so myself constantly because I'm like, do I change the bet? Do I do this? I mean, there's there's no rhyme or reason, right? It's just the way the cookie crumbles, the way that wherever the ball may le- land, whether or not I change up my bet, from red to black, odds to even. There's no correlation. The fact that then you know um, red is hit seven times in a row means absolutely nothing. It just means that we've had seven red hits in a row, and it could still be another seven to go or none to go. Who knows? That's when I start getting late. When I get to that point in my mind where I'm like, I don't know what to do anymore because I'm sucking myself out. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go like <laughs> do another game right there. So. <coughs> Uh, Frank Rose, first time watching your videos. I'm booking Navigator this season. August, welcome, Frank. Good to jo- have you join us. By the way, if you're new to my videos or you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscri- subscribe button right below this video. It's free to do so. Um, you get notified when I go live and I post new videos. You get nothing to do, everything to gain. And I'm always surprised there's a lot of people who don't subscribe um, in, in our live videos. And it's like, well, you're missing out. But yeah, do so. Uh, Nick, any news on Wonder of the Seas? Uh, any sailings released yet? Nope and nope. No news on that front. So, uh, Ken, I love how we get derailed, but most ships have casinos, right? Yeah, it's fun to go off on a tangent sometimes. Plus, I mean, what else have we really... Um, what I mean, there's not but you know, how many other topics can we really hit? But yeah, it's fun every now and then to kind of talk about other things right there. So, um, Jason Chamey, just before I go to bed, because it's late morning, on a lighter note, I'm staying... Brickle Miami before my cruise. Any good kid-friendly restaurants? Ooh, does anyone have any good recommendations for Jason? Miami kid fr- I mean, there's a lot of great restaurants. You can't really can't go wrong. I, I, very few don't take kids. Um, but I don't have, like, one specifically in the downtown Miami slash Brickle area. But there's a lot of good choices that are out there. So, um, so. Rick, Rick, you're absolutely right. remember. Rick says, "Remember the the roulette ball has no memory. That's what makes it so like, like it, at some point I start like, should I change my bet? You know what I mean? Makes no sense. No. Anyway, uh, Diane, we never hear about the symphony or harmony. Matt, just say those names. I just need to hear them spoken. <clears throat> symphony of the seas, harmony of the seas. There you go." Uh, Burr Spotter, you've never been on a cruise ship before. Well, I hope at some point you're able to go on a cruise ship. It's a lot of fun. I think a lot of people in chat will tell you that exact, uh, thing right there. Hey, Tiger Lily just subscribed. Thank you, Tiger Lily. Um, uh, welcome aboard. It's a fun, it's a fun cruise. Uh, it, it's a fun vacation, I should say. It is a fun cruise, but it's a fun vacation and uh, a nice way to, yeah, I don't know how to explain it. it, it it's a great way to travel and, and I hope you get the opportunity to do so obviously cruises are not operating right now uh generally speaking but yeah sarah's kitchen sup sup man jay Cruteau, hello and welcome good to see you here all right guys well on that note i think we've uh, <laughs> i think we've i think we've covered the the important things we've been live for almost an hour if you can believe that thank you so much for joining us here uh so i want to say a big thank you to our super chatters today thank you tony diaz for the super chat Cruz X, thank you for the super chat. Not a real person, thank you for the super chat. Beatrice, thank you for the super chat. Pascal, thank you so much for your generosity, the super chat. And Jan Fagan, thank you for the super chat. 
Everybody watching, thank you for joining me here. I wish all of you guys a very happy new year. Let's hope for a great start to 21. Our next live broadcast is on next Monday, which is what day? January 4th. So first week back, guys, it is, it, bring up, bring your cruise pants, all right? Because we're getting back in, we've always been into it, but it's going to be new year, new cruise, new you, all that, all that stuff. It's going to be great. I can't wait for the start of the new year. Wipe the slate clean. Start fresh. Looking forward to some fun cruises there. Again, happy new year, everybody. Hope you all stay safe out there. Do something fun. And we'll talk again very soon right here on YouTube. Bye, everybody.